answer, uh, try to argue that in terms of knowledge, yes, a determined thing like a computer can produce something that's undetermined at the knowledge level as opposed to the symbol or the hardware levels. And he tried to argue it by saying, you've got an agent that has knowledge of the other agent. But that knowledge is always incomplete, etc., etc. And I could never understand his argument, and I think most other people couldn't understand his argument. So they liked the idea of the knowledge level in his paper, 1982 paper. But nobody really engaged with his argument because I think it was a flawed argument. In the aspects that are determined, for example, the physical aspect is largely determined, except at the quantum level. If you're thinking in terms of those laws, then determined cannot produce undetermined. However, biotic aspect is undetermined. How a tree grows is undetermined. How an animal, or we, emote is undetermined. What we decide is meaningful is undetermined. And if we are troubled by this, then we are still trapped in the nature, freedom, ground motive. You see, what Diovier suggests is that in reality, Determined and free are not opposites, but they are different aspects of the same thing. There is a whole that operates in some aspects non-determinatively and in some aspects determinatively. Okay. Critique, we've dealt with that. ICT utility, is it practical from a layman's perspective to ask, is ICT Christian? Well, I'm not asking, is ICT Christian? I couldn't care whether it's a Christian or not. As far as I'm concerned, ICT is part of our experience in this world here and now. And so we have to deal with it. We have to come to terms with it in a way that is in line with the creator of the potential of ICT. And we have to try to lead in how ICT is understood and how ICT is designed and how it's developed and how it's used. We should not react as Christians, we should lead. Unfortunately, Christians tend to react to the world. What I found with Doyerweard, and especially in the uh, looking at ICT use and ICT development is that we can actually take a lead in these things and we can offer something to the world that is uh, rich. The psycho aspect, well actually the sensitive aspect is the psychic aspect sometimes called, to do with the aspect of psychology, of mental activity. However, self-perception is not a psychological issue, primarily. I think it's primarily a pistic aspect. What do we believe most deeply about ourselves? What do we assume about ourselves? And although it has psychological effects, every aspect affects all the others, especially the later ones affect the earlier ones. This is the issue in uh, low self-esteem, self-perception, and so on. And when we find we're accepted by Christ, as we are, not just as we should be, not just accepted for heaven when we die, but accepted here and now with all our sins, because Christ's blood covers us, that gives us a different self-perception. I'm not talking about the pride that some Christians uh, exhibit of, be, of being arrogant and thinking that we are special people destined to uh, over overtake the world. I'm talking about a humility, knowing our place with God, that God has paid for us, that God himself has taken 
our filthiness, our sin. Now you all know this, or most of you are Christians know this. But do we let it work itself out? It took me ten years after becoming a Christian before I really understood that God loves me as I am, not as I, not just as I should be. It took me ten years before I really understood it here, rather than just as a doctrine. Finally, GMOs. The reason I don't like GMOs is that I, I think it disrespects the creation. If there are different aspects, there's a physical aspect and the biotic aspect. We should treat biotic entities like plants. We should give them respect as biotic, as biotic entities. And we should go along with the laws of life. For example, we can use um, selective breeding and things like that. Because we're using biological activities. GMOs is treating plants as mere physical things. That's my fundamental objection to it. There's another thing. The fruit of the Spirit, I realized, should give us an attitude to the rest of creation, of love for God's creation, joy in God's creation, at peace with God's creation, patience with the speed at which God's creation works, and so on. Patience with the speed at which God's creation works means I shouldn't perhaps be in a rush to speed it up. Yes, we can modify it, but we should do it with gentleness, kindness, faithfulness, self-control. I see Monsanto and GMOs as going against that. That's my view. I'm not sure that I could argue it in public, because I'm not a good arguer. But just take that as, you know, and think about it. So thank you very much. Thank you for your presence and good questions. It is recorded and it will be uploaded at the website of Hanong Institute for Learning and Training as soon as possible. So you can look at that uh, later as well. Uh, Professor Andrew Baston will speak at the faculty chapel tomorrow morning, 8.30, and he leaves Hanto, and then he goes back to UK in the uh, late night. Okay? I wish you uh, God's blessing for your future research. Hope to see you again here at Hanto. Okay, can I ask you a prayer? To uh, let me give you first these. Okay. This is this is my note, lecture notes mm -hmm. for Rich Media, where I use Doivier's aspects to understand human computer interaction. Great. Engaging with content, including computer games, <coughs> and engaging with life, that is the benefits and detriment of life. And students love this. So there's that second year undergraduate. <laughs> Thank you. Um, here is a paper that in Philosophy of Reformata mm -hmm. where I uh, discuss about how I engage with secular thought. Mm -hmm. And here is an example of engaging in secular thought mm -hmm. using Doyovia's Transcendental Critique to bring together the paradigms of positivism, interpretivism, and critical, critical theory. Great, thank you so much. And this one is. Four-page spread uh, in the University of Salford Research Magazine, the Doivier Theories Aspectual Analysis. And so this went round the world in the glossy brochure, and this is a, um, what my PhD students have been doing, using Doivier's aspects to analyse things. Some are Christians and some are not. So I'll give you a couple of copies of those. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, well, thank you again, and we will close in prayer. Father, I thank you for this visit to Korea. It's been an honor, it's been a pleasure, it's been an excitement for me. But we all thank you for who you are, and what you allow us to experience, and know that you are our Father. And you know our needs before we even ask them, before we are aware of them. 
Father, the words that are spoken today and the thoughts that are produced, if they are of you, may they be planted as a seed in people. May they grow, sprout, and bear fruit a hundredfold. But if they are not of you, then may they be completely forgotten, like seed left on the path that the birds take away. Father, thank you that your will may be done, that your kingdom may come, and your name will be hallowed on earth as in heaven. Amen. Thank you. And we bow to God.